We should do a blood test to be sure, but I'm quite certain you're pregnant. Congratulations. It is such good news. We're meant to be going away. How are we going to do that? You'll go as a family. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I think it's going to be a boy. We've decided that we're moving to Australia. We're not taking my grandchild. We need a fresh start. You cannot walk out on this place! You did it. Yeah. We're going to Australia. Yeah. We're going to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Funerals tomorrow. I should go home. No rest. It's the doctor's orders. How are you feeling? Nauseous. I was the same with Benjamin. I'm gonna need some of my things. I sent Thomas over yesterday. Everything you want will be in your wardrobe. How is the baby? I've been feeling dizzy. I'll get you some water. Maybe you should see another daughter. Don't worry. Everything's under control. <gasps> Thomas, what are you doing? Why are you in here? You're not well. You don't even seem to realize that. Why do you keep me trapped in that house? Your condition, I don't have a condition. <sighs> Give me the key. No. I think I'm going to need your help. Give me the key! No! no! You're sick. Don't you realize you're the one who's sick? Ah! There's been too much death in this family. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions' The Breeze. And today we are here with director Joe Mark Antonio for the film Kindred which is going to be uh, released on November 6th, IFC Midnight. How are you, Joe? I'm pretty good. How's things? Things are good. Things are good. Things are digitally awesome. Checking out some new scary horror movies in the month of October. And uh, Kindred was, was pretty awesome. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you came up with the concept of, of this film. Um, so I think probably about 10 years ago or so, I first came up with the idea, but I didn't really know what to do with it back then it felt a little bit too kind of um kind of fritzel if that makes sense it felt a little bit too kind of like uh tortury almost <laughs> and i didn't really know how to approach it and then over the course of the last few years i kind of wrote some other stuff and i made a couple of short films and then it was time to write what i knew would be kind of like the first feature you know it was like it was kind of on the cards um, I had a relationship with the producer and so I knew I needed to find a film that had like a limited amount of cast, a limited amount of locations that was kind of achievable and all of a sudden this idea jumped back out at me after 10 years and I think the fact was I had a three-year-old son at that point and I had a daughter on the way and that really informed a kind of a new way of looking at the idea as something more about manipulation and suspense rather than kind of a traditional horror. Yeah, uh, I would say that uh, the, the meaning or the term dysfunctional family is an understatement <laughs> for, for this film. Uh, it is quite interesting to see the relationship that the mother uh, that um, lives in a very uh, beautiful home in England and then uh, the son and uh, his wife come to visit her and the other son that lives with the mother and the relationships that all of them have together is quite tumultuous. Mm -hmm. um, a wonderful cast that you have in the project, mm -hmm. including Fiona Shaw and Tamara Lawrence. Uh, I mm -hmm. thought that their personalities were, uh, were incredible. So what was it like working with Fiona and Tamara on this project? I mean, oh, I, mean I got very, very lucky, basically. Um, Fiona, I mean, I was, when my casting agent suggested her, I was like, you know, she's riding high on um, uh, Killing Eve and, you know, um, had been nominated for, for awards and Emmys and all kinds of things. Um, and I was like, do you think she'd do it? <laughs> my husband was like, you know, we can ask. So we asked and she was really into it. You know, she's, she's such a nice, 
talented lady, you know, she's super cool. So we met, you know, me being English, I met for a cup of tea and talked it through. And then she invited me to her house a couple of weeks later and I had to go around her house, which is a bit scary, just because I didn't know what to expect. And then she was in, you know. And the funny thing was, she, she was shooting, her first day was a Tuesday and she flew straight from London. She'd won the BAFTA for um, Best Supporting Actress for Killing Eve. And then the next day was in an abandoned mental hospital <laughs> in a rural island, wow. getting thrown on the floor by, by someone else. You know, it was a bit of a fall from grace, I think, for her. But she was, um, she's really cool. And then Tamara, again, is her first leading role in a film. She's done some, she did a big TV project before, but that's pretty much it. But um, she was just a good, great find. You know, she's amazing. She gave a haunting performance, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, uh, as the synopsis says, a psychologically fragile mother. Uh, yes, yeah. def definitely so. But what was yeah. interesting to me, uh, I'm coming for, uh, from America, uh, at least on the East Coast in New York, there's uh, an issue with the film with uh, dysfunctional families. And uh, in England, there's a, a certain a focus on the pride of lineage. So mm -hmm. we're talking about uh, a mother that keeps talking about how important her family is and the family and, the, and that this baby that Tamara Lawrence is carrying is, needs to be in the family. Is that, uh, is that something that you really focused on or have noticed while you have been living and growing up in, in England, uh, the, the, the seriousness of lineage and that it kind mm -hmm. of gave more of a, an atmosphere to this film? Yeah, I think that um, it's, you know, heritage, is probably one of the things that Britain's most famous for, but you know, it inherently then leads to a class system. And that's probably one of the biggest issues that the country faces in general. You know, there's such a big class issue and that's kind of what it represents in the film. You know, you have people who are obsessed with lineage and obsessed with heritage and obsessed with family and who are essentially once were kind of the, the pride of the upper class who through um, tax and death duty and whatnot have found themselves slightly on their ass and not willing to let go of their kind of their once great kind of uh, moments you know yeah. it's I guess a little bit of a reflection on Britain in general and kind of the, the fall of the empire you know it was we live in a country many people of which are obsessed with past glories which is kind of to the detriment of what's actually going on in the world, you know? Yeah, and Fiona's character lives in an absolutely beautiful mansion. Uh, and while you're looking, I was, I was also interested with the locations of where you mm -hmm. found this in England. I mean, uh, it's the horses and the stable and the beautiful fields, uh, the sprawling properties. Does the, did you uh, know that this was the spot you were going to choose when you were location scouting? How did that come to you? No, no, no. So we, I mean, I wrote it to, to be set in Scotland initially, but then we couldn't shoot in Scotland for various production reasons. So we actually shot in Ireland. Um, oh. So it was, it's in a place called Stradbally, it's Stradbally House in a town called Stradbally, a little village called Stradbally on the outskirts of a town called Port Leash, which is literally in the middle of Ireland. Oh, and the only thing it's very famous for is it's got Ireland's biggest prison. So um, our crew hotel was full of people going to visit Uncle John in prison for the weekend. You know, oh, it was a, it's quite, quite a strange place. Um, it was cool, you know, and but the house was just a dream to find. It was logistically difficult because it meant that we had to put a lot of crew in hotels that ordinarily could have stayed, if they were shot closer to Dublin, they could have stayed at home and commuted in. And so there was a cost involved and logistically yeah. the unions find it slightly difficult to shoot outside of the cities. But um, it was worth all the kind of hassles production wise just because it's such a great house, you know. Sure. Uh, my next question is about the uh, spooky films, horror films. There's, there's mm -hmm. many of them for audiences to choose. Uh, and after I watched Kindred, I wanted to hear from you of what you think makes your film the spookiest, the scariest, the most, uh, you know, intriguing, thrilling uh, film that people can go and check out. What do you think? I think the, the one thing we've got going for us above most horror films you see these days is that... Um, it's a, a more kind of authentic film, you know, it's based in reality. It's not a hyper real film. You know, you're not, we're not dealing with any supernatural beings. We're dealing with real people that are twisted rather than kind of an invented creature, you know? Yeah. 
Um, so I think we got that going for us. And it's about suspense and surprises rather than jump scares, you know, okay. which I find more satisfying. And uh, since we're talking about horror movies, what is your personal favorite horror film? That is a big question. Huge, um, huge question. I'd like to close with a big one. Yeah, quite. I think probably something like, these are slightly lame probably and a bit too mainstream, but I'm a big fan of the original Alien, Jaws. I know they're not horror, but there's something so terrifying about them. I'd probably class them that way. Rosemary's Baby was obviously a big influence on the film. Yeah, <laughs> speaking um, of a film that involves with a baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is it, yeah. Um, there's probably a million, I mean, there obviously are a million others that I can't think of. Um, that, that's a good selection right there. And yeah. uh, Also, I would also give a shout out yes. to Bong, Bong Joon-ho's mother. I don't oh, know if you've ever oh, seen yeah, it, the sure. Korean one. Like again, not not really a horror film, but that was like a massive influence on me. I'd like that's probably one of my favorite films ever. Yeah. Uh, hey, listen, uh, you, we stand on the shoulders of giants when it comes down to <laughs> watching <laughs> films of what came before us and then what inspired yeah, yeah. us to do our own twists and our own direction of making films. But uh, but Joe, I, I definitely enjoyed this one. It was very spooky, and uh, I was into it the whole way. Wonderful performances, uh, a great location, and uh, definitely eerie to see how a dysfunctional family works uh, with some serious uh, situations that they fall into. But, you know, I want to thank you for coming on the show today and talking about the film Kindred, which is going to be released on November 6th. And uh, we hope that our audiences can check it out and that the film goes on to great success. Thank you, Alex. Cheers.